You were singing that I get my go. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. I'm Big Anklevich. And I am Rich Outfield. Oh, we're going there, are we? Jealous? Yeah. This is my gets my toast. Okay. <laughs> what is this show called? That gets my goat, I believe, is the uh, agreed upon title. And uh, yeah, we're here to get some goats. Not in that way, though. Get some goats in a <laughs> you know, compromising position. You know, sadly, when I was a kid in high school, that's what we used to call an unattractive girl. A goat? <laughs> yes. That was the uh, slang among me and my friends. So, oh, dude, not that chick. She's a goat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I called unattractive girls in high school? Well, Potential love interest. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow... You know, it's been a couple of weeks since we did the actual That Gets My Goat, because we waxed positive for once, if you recall. How dare you? What? Oh, oh the, that I did the hand gesture when I said waxed. No, no, just to have waxed positive on this show at all, that's, that's not okay. I guess the show was set up to complain about things. No, I think we just did. We thought it would be fun to complain, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can have an unattractive woman be a goat and get her. Someday, Jennifer. Someday. <laughs> Well, you were gone for a long time. I had to sort of tread water while you were gone. Like Magnum P.I. in that one episode? Oh, no, I didn't see that. You never saw that? Oh, he treads water the whole show. Oh, cool. And he remembers back to when earlier he was a episodes. Child, oh, oh. And his dad made him tread water. It was in Hawaii, wasn't it, that it was set? So there's a lot of water around there, I've heard. Yeah, you could almost say that it's an island, but yeah, it's only an island from the shore. I can't remember. What's that quote from Jaws? It's only an island if you look at it from the water. I have no idea. Yeah, so I just split that episode where you talked about the girl, the woman, the uh -huh. broad, the goat, at the <laughs> party. Right. Uh, and then where I t met that girl, woman, at the karaoke competition. And I split that into two, thinking, okay, well, that'll give us a couple of weeks of chat. But now we're back, so... We're back! Yeah! Hope you enjoyed the... Wait, that's not this show. <laughs> <laughs> Long overdue, in my opinion, that Wolfman Jack impression. Wait, was that? No, that was just me saying, and we're back! Yeah, I liked doing that, too. So, do you want to go first? Well, yeah, I mean, I was gone. Yes. Where were you gone? I was gone to the southern extremes of our country. Well, sort of. I guess the most southern extreme would be Florida. But I went to Southern California because that's a nice place to go in the winter, I guess. It's not like when we went to Canada at Christmas time. Rectus <laughs> Dominus! <laughs> Let me tell you, it got to like 40 below while we were there. And it was so cold that I don't know how a heater works, but I think what it does is it takes the heat from the engine that is generated as your engine runs and it blows that into your car. It was so cold that it was still blowing 40 below air <laughs> into our car. It wasn't until we made it all the way into Montana and out of the uh, country of Canada that we uh, started to actually feel warmth come from the heater. We thought the heater was broken. Turns out it's just so cold that the heater could not heat that air up enough to feel warm. We had on all the clothes that we'd brought with us <laughs> all at once. I was wearing like three pairs of jeans. At the same time. <laughs> and I had everything else on top of me like a blanket. Just hoping. And we bought. We stopped at the first gas station and bought some gloves. Because we couldn't feel our fingers. Just sitting in the car. It was that freaking cold. Now, was this the trip where you and your buddy went up to court your women? Who it were was. Both Canadian? Yes, as a matter of fact. I remember that. And around that same time, I also made a trip to Canada. It was in January. Really? And I, I would have been that same year. Why because would you do this? Natasha, she, she said she'd be here. Is that what it was? Or told me she'd be here? She said that she'd be here. <laughs> oh, good times, folks. And that was around that time, too. Yeah, it was. Line? Why would you do this? One of my roommates was getting married. And they oh, got yeah? mar married in, like, Cardston, Cardston or some... Alberta, Canada? Alberta. Yeah, with Calgary or Cardston or one of those places that starts Lethbridge? with a C. Lethbridge? Oh, wait. It starts with a C, sorry. It was uh, Saskatoon, actually. Ah, and with an S. so we drove all the way up there. And it's not a C with a Sedilia underneath it, actually. <laughs> Saskatoon. It's not in, uh, in, in Quebec. Yeah. I'm forced, by the way, to make that unpleasant sound anytime you say that word, <laughs> just, just in the future. Which one, Saskatoon or no, Sedilia or Quebec? <laughs> so anyhow, uh, 
I experienced the cold of deepest, darkest hell as well. <laughs> uh, so cold that like your urine stream would solidify before it hit the ground. Luckily, <laughs> it didn't freeze all the way up because that could be pretty bad. <laughs> I wonder if Captain is that his name Captain Cold it is right Captain Cold or Iceman or, ever did that to somebody he's out camping with his friends or something and like hey I gotta take a whiz so they start whizzing he goes and zaps their urine stream and it goes up and freezes their dong that would be pretty bad I'm sure if Stan were here he'd say <laughs> we didn't talk about superheroes <laughs> private pods in those days but I wish we had when I created Superman I. So, yes, I, I feel your pain, brother. Yeah. And any time of the year, not just winter, it's good to go down to Southern California. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of Southern California, to tell you the truth, and that's because of... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Mike shorted out for a second. I, it sounded like you said you weren't. <laughs> yeah, that's because I grew up in Northern California, and that's just one of those things. It's like uh, Boston Red Sox versus New York Yankees or something, you know. It's Southern California versus Northern California is just a automatic uh, kind of a rivalry. Jealous? Some might like to say that that's what it would be, but they said to live in Northern California once and leave before it made you soft. Southern California, if if they were to have said it that way, they'd say live in Southern California once, but leave before it makes you an asshole. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of Southern California. There are things that are very nice about Southern California, I have to admit. The, the beaches are nice and warm there. It is warmer there because it's hundreds of miles to the south. And so, yeah, we, we went down there for that very reason. We had done the give-a-day, get-a-day Disney deal where you could volunteer for charity. And by doing that, they would give you a free ticket to the Disney parks. And so we were like, that sounds like a good deal. So we did so that. So you had a free ticket? No, we had one for each of us. Oh, okay. We wanted to do that. No, wait, wait. So Zydel had dedicated five days to public service, or she got... Oh, I'm sorry. Zydel is Big Anklevich's wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> or did she just get the five tickets for the one day of... Well, uh, of Zydel actually sewed quilts. She's handy with the sewing machine, and she sewed quilts for the service and uh military service and st in in this particular case it wasn't the actual day they just assumed you did one quilt you got one day and so she just made five quilts oh cool but oh, wait she can sew an entire quilt in a day she can sew more than that. i mean they weren't huge That's quilts amazing. or anything like that but she could i think she may well have done them all in we one day. I wrote a script in college for a short film that we were going to make a sci-fi film Ah, and yes. I asked Zydel to fabricate costumes for our alien characters. And uh, she, as if I recall, did all the work and sewed all these costumes for our cast members. And the movie <laughs> never <laughs> happened. Made, that's right. But yeah, so that's how we wound up with the tickets. And so, yeah, we headed down. Uh, the deal was that, you know, you, you got these tickets, but you had to use them in 2010. Mm. And so we were originally going to go in the summer and then stuff came up and we're like, ah, oh, crap, we're not going to be able to do this when we want to. It's not going to work out. And so we're like, okay, we'll put it back to December and that'll probably be a good time to go to Disneyland because it'll probably be less packed because mm. everybody can go, you know, everybody's off during the summer. Everybody's kids have the school off. So we tried to go one of those weeks that actually school was normally in session. And did that pay off for you? Was it not? I busy? think it wasn't nearly as I don't know. I mean, I didn't go in the summer, so I don't know how bad it was. But okay. it was fairly good. We were able to get into rides a lot quicker than I expected. We didn't have a lot of those wait in line for a whole freaking hour kind of deals. But yeah, so we headed down there. December came around. We still probably couldn't handle it, but you know, we we're like, crap, it's got to be now or never. Couldn't handle it? Financially? <sighs> right. We got Christmas. <clears throat> we got everything going on may well have been easier in june after all but now was the time it was now or never so we went down there we uh we had ourselves a good time we stopped in at las vegas on the way there and you're not at all experienced with las vegas i'm not 
See, um, I have many relatives that live in Las Vegas. Right. My grandmother, before she passed away, lived in Las Vegas, and so I would go there all the time. I, it was like a second home to me before I moved to L.A. And Yeah, my experience with Nevada has always been more Reno because I lived up in Sacramento, which is only hours away. I've been to Reno lots of times. How long a drive from Sacramento to Reno, do you remember? It's like an hour and a half to two hours. Holy poo, really? Yeah, it's really close. Sorry about the language, folks. <laughs> yeah, tone it down here, please. This is a family show. Oh, no, gosh, it's not. Sorry. Know. So that's where most of my experience is, which is like a very, very little Vegas. You know, they still have a, a lot of the same casinos. They have the, like a a Reno version, right? A Reno version, but the Reno version is a far cry to the Las Vegas version. You know, I don't know that I've ever been to Reno ever. There's not really many reasons to go. Okay, been to Henderson. I, as a matter of fact, speaking of that, that's where I, I stayed on the way back. Oh. was in Henderson. Well, I, d- I did not know that. Did no. you know that, Ed? You are correct, sir. <laughs> that, that is funny stuff. You know, he's been gone so long, that, that impression, if it would have resonated, I don't know how good <laughs> it is, probably resonates with far fewer people. That's that's Do you think, the way things are. Your Douglas Fairbanks impression resonates with even less people, it turns out. Of course, doing impressions of silent movie actors on a podcast is not really very good. I, it was a bad idea of mine, wasn't it? <laughs> Here's my Marcel Marceau. Ready? That is actually uncanny. Thank you, man. I think I've used that word before, but... <clears throat> not in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> when I created the X-Men, I... Anyways, uh, we stopped at Vegas. We checked out the sites. We just did, you know, whatever was cheapest there, to tell you the truth. We walked down the Vegas Strip and checked out the Bellagio Fountain, which I hadn't seen before. I think I've seen it in a couple of movies. I think it's in the background of the end of Ocean's Eleven, but, you know, it's totally not part of it, so you don't really see it. But that is really freaking cool. That, I think, was my favorite thing. We did see a couple other things, like there's a volcano at the Mirage Hotel that explodes every hour on the hour or something like that. That was the, uh, kind of an unfortunate thing, was everything happened every hour on the hour. There's the tranny hooker on a Tropicana that uh, vomits every hour on the hour. Yes, that's right. There was a big crowd around that one, so I wasn't able to really get close enough to, to smell it. But we did have that on our list. The, the, the casinos are big enough that it almost takes an hour to walk from one to the next one to the next one. So walking through, you mean? Right, from down you, the block or walking it through the inside or, or whatever. It's they're, they're big friggin' buildings, man. It's pretty amazing. It didn't take long before my feet started to hurt. Another cool thing about the Bellagio Fountain is that it's not every hour on the hour. It's every 15 minutes. Oh, cool. So when we got there, we're like, oh, crap, because it was in the middle of one of its performances or whatever you want to call it. We're like, oh, crap, it's going. We're going to have to wait. It's in its refractory period. <laughs> Damn. Well, yeah, we're like, we're going to have to wait an hour. It, and we saw the end of it. And it was it was performing to Singing in the Rain. Oh, cool. Which was cool because that's a really long song, apparently. You know, it took a long time. We saw probably three minutes of that performance of The Fountain. And then right afterwards, there's a little announcer that comes over and says, oh, the next performance will be in 15 minutes. And we're like, oh, sweet. So we don't have to wait another hour sitting here for this thing to uh, do its thing. And strangely, the next song it performed to was a Christmas song this time because, you know, it was into December when we were there. And uh, Christmas song was shorter. The performance of it from beginning to end was shorter than the amount we saw of the end of the Singing in the Rain one. Oh, that's, that's interesting. interesting. The, the song changes every fifteen minutes. Too. I get. Yeah, I'm sure. I like that. I'm sure they only have like four or five or something like that that they do. You know, and they keep repeating. But we saw two of them. But yeah, that's just a really impressively cool fountain. Have you ever seen the uh, YouTube video where somebody tried to uh, recreate the Bellagio fountain using uh, the soda pop bottles, dropping the Mentos into them where they spray out? No, not at all. <laughs> that's pretty cool too. Had, you gotta, you've done that Mentos yeah. Diet Coke. I, I was told that it had to be Diet Coke. It doesn't. Is it just that Diet Coke tastes bad, so it's okay to waste that? <laughs> Probably. Any soda. It doesn't even have to be Mentos, to tell you the truth. We did a whole research piece about it once, and uh, you could just drop a rock in there. It's, it's all about the displacement of space and you know the whole carbonation then causing it to bubble up and burst and stuff like that. That's weird, because I'll bet, I'm speaking of Vegas... I would wager a great deal of money that Mentos sales skyrocketed oh, when yeah. that started to happen because people totally. like me were under the impression that it had to be Mentos. And it had to be Diet Coke. 
Well, I just assumed that, you know, Although tab I, could work too. <laughs> Even the generic Coke, I think that's what I actually did it with. 75 cent version that you can get at the local grocery store. So anyways, yeah, we saw that stuff in Vegas. And then we moved on and we went to L.A. to uh, go to Disneyland. And were you disappointed to realize that Disneyland was all the way down in Anaheim <laughs> and you'd gone to L.A.? I, I knew that that was the case. But He kept saying that, you know, he's like, okay, we're in L.A. I was like, dude, I should have told you. Oh, crap, you got to get back on the 10. <laughs> go, go find the 5 and... Yeah, L.A. is the whole place, man, when you're not there. I'm sure you, if you live there, you give a crap. The distinction between uh, Orange County and L.A. County and whatever BS that they care about down there. But for those of us who don't, we don't. <laughs> for our listeners across the pond, it would be a whole nother country. Yeah, there you go. Paris, London, it's all the same. They care even less. We were there, and uh, the first place that we went to which I thought somebody would think was cool, aside from myself, was we went to the Walk of Fame. I think my kids are too young to give a crap. And maybe, just like people don't get your Douglas Fairbanks impersonation anymore, when people walk across the Douglas Fairbanks star on the Walk of Fame, they don't really care so much about that either. Ed Asner is too young to appreciate most of the names <laughs> there, I think. Because they, they used to put up tons of radio actors and stage actors and, and film actors back in the, the silver age of comic books. <laughs> back in the, 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 the golden, the boom, age, golden of age of, of Hollywood – and the vast majority of those names are unfamiliar. I, yeah. You know, it's just like, oh, look, Mel Torme. And, and you're the only one who's pointing at that star. Everybody else <laughs> is like, who? You know, like, oh, shoot. He's the most famous person on this block. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we did have a, a little of that. I recognized most of them. But, you know, finding ones to point out to my kids was a little more difficult because my kids are 10 and under. Now, you visited a star that is, is particularly special to me, and your kids were just like, yeah, I, I don't know. Your kids all made jerking off motions <laughs> when you took them to it. I wish I'd never shown them that whole jerking off motion thing, because they just do it so often now. Yeah, and what sucks is the youngest was in the crib when you taught her, and we all thought it was so cute, but now, all these years later, it was not cute. <laughs> Which star is this that you're referring to? When I lived in L.A., uh, word spread that Harrison Ford was finally going to get a star on the Walk of Fame. And I had a job before I pissed it away that was so good, I said, I'm going to take a very long lunch to go see Harrison Ford get his star. Uh huh. So, yeah, I drove out there and I was there to see him get the star. And oh, as far cool. as I know, you stood on that same star and showed your kids. And they're just like, yeah, who's that? Oh, is he the old guy that was in? <laughs> he's that old guy on Cowboys and Aliens? Oh, he sucks. You know, I mean, they didn't know him by name because they're not going to know that many people by name. I mean, there's stars that you're always spouting off about that I'm like, who is the, What was he in? Okay, but I, I got to stop you here, man. Harrison Ford. He's not just a star. Her that's I know, Harrison I understand, Ford. but they don't know him by name. But when we said, oh, that is Indiana Jones, and they all went, oh, and I said, that's also Han Solo, because uh, my son loves Star Wars more than his parents. And yeah, your son knelt down by the star <laughs> and said, you shot first, Han. <laughs> that's right. And it, I was moved when you told me. <laughs> So, yeah, I did see the Harrison Ford star. We saw a bunch of others. I told my kids they could each take up, uh, they could take as many pictures as we want. We've got a damn digital camera, so you can snap as many as you want. But it's a better story if they could each take one to picture. Pick somebody. I, I made them. I said, you find one, and you're taking your picture in front of a star of somebody you like. So they each found somebody. And there are a few that are there for, there's one for like Donald Duck, and there's one for Tinkerbell. And I'm sure Mickey Mouse is there somewhere, but we didn't find it. When your middle child chose John Holmes, I was touched <laughs> in a way that, okay, maybe not touched, disturbed, I, upset. Touched, a bad touch. It's one of those yes. kind of bad touches. Stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so they each picked somebody. Uh, my son, he didn't choose Harrison Ford, although he might have. Oh, no. <laughs> he might have had we not already taken the other one. But yeah, he, he picked Thomas Edison. 
Oh, but there was a story behind that, so that's okay. Well, yeah, yeah. He actually just did an extensive report on Thomas Edison in school like three weeks ago. So when he found Thomas Edison's star, he was like, oh, check this out. You know, he was all excited. And, you know, Thomas Edison's star should be on the dang walk of fame because... Film. Yeah, the whole inventing the film camera kind of really started the whole thing. I don't know. I expected them to be more into it, more excited or something. I mean, this is the iconic thing. I mean, this is Hollywood. It's the most famous place in LA. Yeah, it, this is it. And we get there. I'm and sorry, it would be, be aside from the foot of Lindsay Lohan's bed, the most <laughs> famous place. Yeah, so we get the there. The most visited place. <laughs> we get there and we're, <laughs> the kids, the first thing that they want, they're like, where's the bathroom? I need a freaking bathroom now, Dad. <laughs> you called me <laughs> thousands of miles away and says, hey, we're here on Hollywood Boulevard and, and Vine. Where's a restroom. <laughs> so, it's like, and, oh, well, I, I didn't tell you. Hollywood Boulevard is a restroom. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should have just freaking said, okay. Just uh, find a star of someone you don't like. Open it up and whiz. But it yeah. used to be like that. Oh, geez. When I first went there, it was so sleazy and gross <laughs> and covered with homeless and half of them were dead. It was, ugh, it, was it hasn't gotten too much better, to tell you the truth. But uh, Oh, I thought they'd cleaned it up. They may have, but yeah. Family did up. My wife was getting tired of walking past... They have like special mannequins there. I don't know if you've ever. Uh, normally, you have a man- oh, really, they, really hot, slutty mannequin. Gigantically, you know, yeah, uh, uh, surgically altered mannequins. These mannequins were normal mannequins at one point, and they went back to the woodworker and had him uh, augment the uh, bosoms because holy crap, I've never seen such mannequins. But they had them in store after store after store. These same mannequins with gigantic bosies. Did you by any chance get the number of this woodworker? <laughs> I didn't. Okay. They didn't have it advertised there. But yeah, I thought that was uh, interesting. Special large-breasted mannequins for the uh, the Walk of Fame. I guess Thank you, it, sir. May I have another? I guess it makes sense. We're talking Southern California, where that whole thing probably was invented in the first place. Thomas Edison invented the film camera. And uh, uh, wasn't it uh, Ross? What was Ross's actor's name from Friends? David Schwimmer? Yeah, there was a movie about the guys who came up with the whole breast implants in the first place. Oh, it's place. called Breast and, Men or something. Yeah, and David Schwimmer played one of the uh, one of the guys. Wasn't Noah Wiley and Bre- David Schwimmer? It may have been. Although I thought <laughs> Noah Wiley played Steve Jobs in the other movie about people who invented stuff. Anyways, my wife wasn't too happy to keep bringing our young son in front of row after row after row of gigantically breasted mannequins. Please tell me that impressed him, though. I, <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, Harrison Ford, no. The, the, the worst thing was we'd spent the entire day from before noon driving from Vegas to L.A. So we've been sitting hours on end. We get there and we walk like two blocks. And I'm like, I'm tired. I need to sit down. It's like, we've been sitting for hours. You really want to go sit some more? The claws come out. I'm taking you to this place. We're not likely to come back here again. I mean, this is Southern California here. You're going to have to pay me to come back here again. And they can't act like they like it. I mean, I guess they're, that's why they're not on the Walk of Fame already. It's because they're not actors. They, they just couldn't do it. And I actually had to pick my youngest up and carry her piggyback style half the friggin' length of the uh, walk so that we could make it to the Chinese theater and see the fun there before we went home. But they, in the end, enjoyed it. They thought it was pretty cool at the Chinese theater to go around and see all the various blocks of cement that have been, you know, prints have been left there for, I mean, it's 60, 70 years old prints. They got Mickey Rooney's hand prints there from when he was a child actor still. And they got Judy Garland's footprints, which are unbelievably small. Maybe it was just because she was young. I don't know what the deal is, but her size, shoe size must be too insane. But uh, yeah, you know, they got to see R2-D2's footprints. And they got to see Rupert Grint's footprints. Nice. Ron got splinched. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. What was playing at the Grumman's Chinese? I don't know. I didn't look to see what was playing there. They didn't have like the giant marquee in it? They probably did, but I didn't look at it. 
Maybe it's in the background of one of my pictures, but I don't think so. My pictures from there suck. Although there was one great one where I tried to take a picture of my son with the R2-D2 and C-3PO footprints on the Star Wars one. And at the same time, my youngest daughter is in the background leaning over and putting her hands into the handprint of somebody that's right behind it. And so you see my son sitting there and he's smiling and then right over his shoulder is just butt cheeks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this pretty funny picture. You know, many of my favorite memories from Hollywood Boulevard also involved <laughs> butt cheeks. Butt cheeks in the background. It was a dirty, dirty place. All right. You know what? We've been talking for a long time. It gets my goat supposed to be like 15 minutes long, and this is really, really Probably long. like 40 minutes long by now. I don't know how long we've been going, but... Okay, yes. Before you tell me about your Disneyland adventure... Let's just quit and we'll come back next week. Cause, okay, that's a good uh, idea. Just say, I, I have a feeling that you'll have a lot to say and, and uh, there, there are subjects I want to talk about that we won't even get to. Okay. Well, I'm Big Ankovich. Uh, hey, and I'm Rish Outfield. We'll see you again next time on That Gets My Goat. <sighs> that Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative License. I'm Big Anklovich. I'm British Outfield. Oh, your mic is gone, I think. Jealous. There you go. Hello? We might need to start all the way over because I don't know if you're... I'm. How is this better? Worse. It's fine. Are you, are you good? <laughs> How do you think you feel now? Better or worse? Okay. <laughs>